Anyone who has used a Linux terminal in a substantive way is most likely familiar with the cat command, which will concatenate multiple files. That is, it will take multiple files as input and produce to standard output those files run together end on end. For instance, you can see that I have here in this directory two files, file 1 and file 2. I can open one of them up, file, let's say file 1. And you see it has some text in it. If I open the other one, you can see that it has some more text in it. If we were to cat these two files together, file 1 and file 2, you would see that cat will concatenate them. It will run them together and then print that out to standard output. Now, that really is the, the intended use case for cat, to concatenate files. But a very common use case, probably the one that most people are familiar with is simply using cat with a single file to print its text to standard output so you can see what's in it. Now that's all well and good. It's not exactly what cat is intended for, but it's its most common use case. But I've recently found out about a program that is, or rather claims to be, better than cat. And it is called, humorously enough, dog. And so in this video, I thought I would go over the dog program and tell you a little bit about it and how it differs from cat and how maybe it's better. So to begin with, I should say that DOG is definitely not going to be installed in Gentoo if you're using Gentoo by default. So you'll want to install it with sudo emerge sys-apps-dog. And it's a small, simple program that should download quickly and set itself right up for you. Now, DOG is intended as a cat replacement. And so it should be expected that it has the same functionality as cat. As you can see, I'm still in this directory with these two files. If I were to run DOG, on file one and file two, you can see that just like cat, it will run them together end to end. And also just like cat, I can print off the contents of one of these files to see what's in them. So in that sense, dog is a drop-in replacement for those common use cases of cat. But if we were to take a look at the man page here of the dog program, you can see that it claims to be better than cat. And that's because dog is designed and intended to be compatible but enhanced as a replacement for cat. And if you scroll down, you can see that it has lots and lots of options that cat does not have. You can see the size of the man page here. And in fact, if we were to open up another window and do man cat, you can see that it has a much, much smaller man page. Dog has all of the options that cat has, and they do the same things, but it has a whole host of additional options that go along with it that will provide it with more functionality. Now, while from a design perspective, CAT is intended to concatenate files and just incidentally happens to be commonly used to view the contents of files, DOG is more intended from the very beginning to be made for printing the contents of files and manipulating that printed output. So while it can concatenate files and operate on the concatenated data just as easily as CAT can, really it has a lots of built-in features that are meant to format that outputted file contents for ease of use uh, or ease of reading for the user. Just to give you an example of what I mean, I'll back out of here and go over a few of the built-in functions that DOG has with its options. Now I have a great big file here that if you open up, you see it has many, many lines in it. Too many to print here on the screen. There are many hundreds or thousands of lines in this particular file. And while I can use DOG to just print out the contents of this file, I can also use DOG to perform some basic operations on it to format the output to make it easier for me to read. For instance, a good option that DOG has is the hyphen capital B option, which will strip off any blank lines. That is, any lines that either have no characters on them except a return character or that have only white space characters on them like spaces and tabs. So if we were to run DOG hyphen B on this same text document, you can see that all of that blank space throughout the document, especially here at the very end, has been stripped away, and it's compressed it down. Now, this is similar to the dash S option in CAT, which DOG also has, which is going to squeeze the output or remove successive blank lines. But in fact, this will completely remove all blank lines, and it considers blank lines to also be lines just with tab or space characters, which is pretty useful since that's usually what people mean when they say blank lines. Another useful option that DOG has is the dash W option, which must be specified with a number N along with it. And what dash W will do is it will cause DOG to only print out the first in characters on a line. So for instance, if we were to say DOG hyphen W5, and then print off that same text document, you can see that it's only going to print the first five characters on each line, if a line has that many characters. 
Another really useful option that DOG has is the dash L option, which will allow you to print off either individual lines or ranges of lines from the document. To show you what I mean, let's go ahead and specify a number here. Let's say the number 14. And what this is going to do is this is going to print off the 14th line of the specified file. So if we run that, we see we get this line here, which is the 14th line of that big text document that I have. Now we can actually use the dash L option to specify more than one line. So let's try to specify 14 and 19 and 200 of this text file and see what we get. And those are going to be the 14th, the 19th, and the 200th line of the text file. Now you can also use the dash L option to specify ranges and the syntax of this is kind of similar to the syntax of ranges in regular expressions. So let's say that we want to print off everything between line 10 and 25 of this text document. You would specify that by doing the first number and then a hyphen and then the terminating number. So let's go ahead and run this and that's going to be line 10 through 25 of the text document which is pretty cool functionality and there's lots of uses that you could have for something like that. That's a really easy way to get that range of lines there uh, without having to use something like set or all. Another type of feature that DOG has in fairly great abundance is its translation features, which are text processing features wherein DOG will take the file that it's inputted and output text that is translated in some way. A good example of this is the upper function which, as you've probably guessed, will convert all lowercase letters to uppercase letters. So if we run that on this text document, you can see that everything in the entire file has been converted to uppercase letters. Similarly, of course, DOG also has a lower option, which will convert everything that's capital into lowercase letters. Now, those are the ones that you might actually be able to get some use out of, but there are a few translation functions that are built into DOG that are really more for fun, really more tongue-in-cheek. So I have another file here that I'll print out with DOG that uh, has a little bit more plain English in it that we can see at the end of the file here. And this is really the best example of these sort of humorous translation functions that are built into DOG. I can run DOG, for instance, to demonstrate this with the KRAD option on this file that I have right here. And if you'll notice, this converts it, according to the documentation, to KRAD. But um, from my Xbox Live days, we referred to this as leet speak, uh, where it replaces a lot of the letters with number characters that look very similar to those letters. Uh, another one that uh, I found pretty funny is the dash dash oog option, which if we run it, will convert it to all caps caveman speak. Um, it seems to remove uh, several words from the output, look like the word is, and it makes it look more like... Um, <laughs> what you would think a caveman would be talking like, or yelling like, really, um, which, which is which is pretty funny and neat. Another one that it has that's like this is the dash dash str fry, which it says will stir fry. Um, and I think what that does is that just randomly rearranges the characters on each line uh, and kind of jumbles it all together in the output. So that's that's kind of neat. Like I said, these translation functions are really just kind of jokes. They're kind of tongue-in-cheek. But Dog has several things like this built in that are really more, like, humorous. One last thing that I should mention, if we go back to the man page of Dog, you can see here that it has lots and lots of networking-based functionality. This is because Dog can actually go over the network and fetch remote files in the form of a URL and then print them out. So, like, you could use Dog to go rem and remotely fetch, like, a web page and print that out. The only unfortunate thing about this is that Dog does not have the ability to read, or should I say connect, with websites that use HTTPS. Um, so if the website has SSL enabled for security features, which nearly all websites do nowadays, DOG actually won't be able to go rem and remotely fetch files like HTML pages from it, which is unfortunate. Um, I believe that this is mostly because DOG is actually quite an old program. Uh, I got the source code and checked it out. The license is dated in 1992, um, and if you actually get the source code tarball from Gentoo, the date on the file is 2003. And even if you were to go to Gentoo's own package page on DOG, there's not been a lot of recent activity. Uh, it looks like the most recent substantive change was right here when DOG migrated to the 1.7-R6 e-build. 
Um, and I believe the only change there was to add a patch that fixed some broken functionality. And those, of course, are provided by Gentoo and are not into the, or they're, they're rather they're patches that are not built into the dog source code. They're just diff files that the eBuilds will apply to the source code when it's compiled by Portage. So dog is a bit of an old program and unfortunately it's from an era that predates SSL for websites. So it doesn't have the functionality of downloading web pages from HTTPS, which is very unfortunate because the idea of being able to cat over the network is really pretty cool. And I'm not aware of any other programs that can really do that. I mean, obviously you could replicate functionality like that with something like wget or curl, but to have that functionality built into something that is essentially cat is pretty neat. All right, and that about does it for this video on dog. Um, so in my closing verdict, is dog better than cat? Um, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I think that it could potentially be, but cat is just a very small, simple program. It's just a core utility built into every operating system. You know it's going to be there if you're writing a shell script for, for Linux, for instance. And while Dog does have a few useful features built into it, I think that most of the stuff that is tacked onto it is, is really just fluff, uh, not really strictly necessary or strictly helpful in most cases. Um, and while the networking functionality would be really cool, like I said, since it doesn't work over HTTPS, that kind of really hurts the program's usefulness overall, in my opinion. So I personally will be sticking to CAT. Um, it would be really cool if this program could be updated uh, since, like I said, it's pretty old. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential for uh, catting over the network, especially with a program that has lots of built-in text processing features like Dog does. But yeah, anyway, hopefully you all found this interesting, if nothing else. Uh, thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time.